Let's get it rolling with the show. Big show today, and as always, our show is sponsored by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tournament, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and make your first bet a big-time win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And check out this winning parlay we got sent in from Jamie over the weekend. They hit an eight-leg parlay on opening day. Eight money lines. Nice. Hit them all. Turn $10 into $1,135.20. Eight money lines. Yankees, Reds, Twins, Dodgers, Padres, uh, Tigers, Blue Jays, and the Guardians. It all hit. Ten nice. bucks wins one thousand one hundred thirty-five bucks and twenty cents. Congratulations to Jamie. If you have a winning ticket, make sure you send it to us on Twitter via email. We will feature it on the show in the coming days. Very good, Mike. All right. So at this time of the year, it's the one of the rare slow times in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you see a few free agent signings here and there. The draft is still almost a month away. And so NFL writers have to come up with lists where they're ranking people, whether it's quarterbacks, teams, or or coaches. And and one came out recently. Where was this one from? I can't remember. This is from Pro Football Network. Dallas D. Robinson was the writer who ranked the 10 best NFL coaches heading into next season. Andy Reid at one, Sean McVay two, Kyle Shanahan three, John Harbaugh four, Mike Tomlin five, Jim Harbaugh, the rookie head coach, second time, at six, Matt LaFleur, seven, Sean Payton, eight, Dan Campbell, nine, and Mike McDaniel at 10. By the way, if Dallas Robinson does a list, we got to be on it. Have so I'm be. locked into a Dallas. Anytime Dallas Robinson puts out some content, I'm, I'm locked in. So what's the beef here? Does anybody have a beef that any of those guys are ahead of Kevin Stefanski? We'll put the, They're put all the, more accomplished. Can you just put that back up? Except for uh, Mike, Mike McDaniel. McDaniel. So let's start at the top. Yeah. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Super Bowl appearance, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl appearance. Uh, Sean Payton, Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Dan Campbell, no. I think Campbell's a little high. Like, but what they all have, except and Mike McDaniel going off name prior recognition. Yeah. I mean, all, almost all those guys have either been to, at least been to a Super Bowl, if not won one. Yeah. Campbell and McDaniel, I think you could put Kevin above them Matt sure. LaFleur won a super, been to a Super Bowl? No, I said I mean, most. They had they had Kevin Stefanski eleven and Zach Taylor twelve. Now personally, I do believe Kevin Stefanski is a better coach than Zach Taylor. But yeah. Zach Taylor's gone to the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mike McCarthy's won a Super Bowl and he's nowhere near the top ten. So that's not the only criteria he was. No, using. but no, but I'm just pointing out what they all have in common there. Uh, Why I think, does Jim get it? He ain't I, been in coaching since. He hasn't even been in the league yeah. in however many years. Because I agree. he's been a great coach. But you don't. I, I it's per, an opinion. I yeah. mean, it's all opinion. I think Sean Payton is vastly overrated. I've said that for years. I, mean, <laughs> I think he's wildly overrated as a head coach. The he had Drew, speaks for itself, He no? had Drew Brees with him. And as soon as, every, all these guys yes, had great okay, but as soon yeah, as Brees left, as soon as Brees retired, he said, I'm out of here. Smart man. Right, but <laughs> the, the reality is he, he, like, never had a bad year in New Orleans, and Breeze was in the decline those last couple of years he was there, and they still won. What was his worst season in New Orleans? Like, 9-8? and eight? I'll tell you one sec. We'll I mean, see. How do I we'll, put Kevin we'll Stefanski see. ahead of him? We'll see. we'll see what he does in Denver. Now, like, he's got full control. He threw Russ out. Not. The guy we'll won see. a Super Bowl. He's been the deep in the yeah. playoffs a million times. 20 years ago. I mean, I fine. 20 years ago. I, fine. If you want to – it's a valid point he won a Super Bowl. That's yeah. fine. So did but, Mike McCarthy, but, but he, you got Kevin Stefanski over him. I do. <laughs> so what does that have to do with But Mike McDaniel and, and Dan Campbell, I don't think, belong. And, and Matt LaFleur is probably a little bit too high on that Listen, list. In the end, these lists are stupid. I agree. It's all opinion. I agree. I, is, is, is Kevin Stefanski a top 10 coach? That's pretty he's much a borderline top 10 coach, okay. in my opinion. Yes. So you put him at 11 where he's at. He's about to be paid like a top 10 I, coach. I, so would have, I would have him somewhere between 8 and 12, yes. Right now. Okay. And that's where he is. And that's and it. Yeah, and that's, and that's, the bottom line is once you have a coach that you think is a top 15 coach, whatever, wherever you want to put that line, you stick with them until you can't anymore. That's what I wanted to see. You say, you've said for years yeah. there's like three or four really, right. really good ones and three or four really, really bad ones. Right. And the rest, it's just word salad. That's right. So where is he? Is he still in the word salad? I stick. 
Well, I think there are levels within the word word salad. I I I I would say there is a tier one. Yeah. And now I think there's a tier two. Yeah. Of good coaches who could become elite coaches, like. Early in Andy Reid's career, nobody would have called him an elite coach. Right. I think Kevin Steph- – now, the question is, right, like – and I used Marvin Lewis last week as the example. The Bengals, when Marvin Lewis came to the Bengals, they had been what the Browns had been before Kevin Stefanski. A complete joke, worst franchise in the league. And Kevin Steph- – and, and Marvin Lewis made the Bengals a respectable franchise. He made them a competitive team. Yep. They were pretty good. And, and I thought Marvin Lewis was a, a decent coach, a pretty good coach. Eventually, it got to a point where he couldn't take his his level of coaching, in my opinion, any higher. They fired him. I thought they waited too long. And now that's where we are with Kevin Stefanski. Kevin Stefanski has proven he's a good coach. Yes. But can he reach that the, the ultimate level with the top of the, the list? More, time will tell. You have to give him way more time to find that out. If it's five years from now, six years from now, and he still only has one or two playoff wins, I'm going to have to move on. Yeah. But I'm for now, I say... Once I know I have a good coach, I keep him around for long enough to prove, can he be great? Or is he just, that's where he is, and you need somebody else to take you the yeah, next I step. got a question that's about how I this. Look at it. When ahead. you say, you know, you want to see, it's going to take some time for yeah. Kevin. If he gives up play calling, does that affect your ability of him as a head coach? It does not life? for me. Okay. Because, because I, all the rest, the top of the names on that all call plays. Let me see that list again. Andy, Sean. Kyle, Lef- they, Matt LaFleur, and Mike Madden. Does Tomlin call plays? I don't think he does. No. I didn't say Tomlin. I said oh, okay. Andy, Sean, Kyle, Matt LaFleur, and Mike McDaniel. It's five of the ten call Peyton plays. Peyton calls plays. Oh, and Sean Payton. Is, is Jim going to call plays? Do we know? No. I don't know if he's announced that. He did not call plays. Uh, McDaniel calls plays. Six out of the ten call plays. Okay. Campbell I'll try to fall. find out the gym. I don't ball. Hold on. think he, he's nah, a defensive he's right. guy. Yeah, I don't yeah, think he's, he's a defensive he's guy. guy. Well, but the defense of guys. I guess he could defensive call the plays. defensive yeah, plays. Yeah, yeah. But uh, nobody cares no. about that. Whoa. <laughs> it's all offensive. Whoa. Right, right, right. Ro- Robert but, Sala should be calling plays. But here's the thing <laughs> is that uh, everybody makes such a big deal about the play calling. And I, the only reason I've made a big deal about it in this situation, I've said it time and time again, is I don't want Kevin Stavansky to have his hand forced taking off the play calling. But ultimately, like, I, I know Jay said a lot of times, well, what does Alex Van Pelt do? He's not calling the plays. That's not true. The offensive coordinator is, and the defensive coordinator, that's, so, so if we want the head coach not to call plays, then what are they doing? Are they doing nothing all week? Of course they're not. <laughs> they're a big part of the offense. And ultimately, in most cases, the head, you think Mike Tomlin sits there and never, never has any comment on plays? Of course he does. I'm sure there were times when Mike Tomlin says, we're doing this. Yeah. yeah. That's and what, he's yeah. the head coach. That's what you better be So doing. the head yeah. coach is always involved, even if he's not calling plays. Um, otherwise, Harbaugh and Tomlin wouldn't get the respect they do. I agree with that. I was just, I just, I was just curious because yeah. the one thing about him has been, like, he's met. The, what I like about Kevin Stefanski yeah. and why I consider him to be maybe a top 10 coach is because he is the best when it comes to managing crisis. Yes. If that makes sense. Very good. Like injuries happen or off the field incidents happen or something like that or locker room stuff happens. You'd be like, oh, they're done. Their minds won't be into the game. And for some odd reason, they come out there on Sunday, they look lights out and they win these games. And I don't think a lot of coaches can have that effect on their players like he can. So I think that that's why I say he's a top 10 coach to me personally, because he has that ability to get everybody to lock in, block out the outside noise, block out the stuff that's going on, focus on the task at hand. Now, as far as the play calling goes, to me, that's just been a, it's been a roller coaster. There's been times where some seasons he's been good, some seasons he's been bad, and it's just a lot of variables that goes into it. But I think this season was the one that showed me, like, this dude can be really good at calling plays. And another thing that I really respect him for, it don't matter who's under center for him, he makes it work for some odd reason. And that's <coughs> something that's special yeah. as well. But he hasn't made it work with Deshaun Watson yet. And that's what he's got. Ah, that TBD. He has it. TBD. I, this, no, to this point. Deshaun looked, looked good his last few starts. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He was awful in the first half against Baltimore. And then he dinked and it dunked to 14 to 14 in the second half. Let's not make it bigger than it was. He won. Okay, well, uh, that's it. We're just going to judge it based on five games. Philip Walker won. Philip win, you know. Walker won. Listen, Kevin Stefanski, I love Kevin Stefanski. I think he's a hell of a coach. I, I think he is in the top 10 coaches, right? <coughs> but the, 
he's got to he's got to help, and I blame Deshaun Watson a lot for his struggles. But Kevin Stefanski has got to help elevate his game. He's done it. Like Kevin's great with these guys who you don't expect much from, yeah. or when there's no expectation expectations for the team. Kevin comes through. But what happened when they had expectations the year after Baker? The team went down the tubes. What? There's going to be a ton of expectations this year after the Browns won 12 games last year. They tied the franchise record for most wins. Everybody in Cleveland is expecting the Browns to go to the playoffs. And he can't, you know, how does he deal with the expectations? How does he deal with Watson? It's got to happen for Watson this year. And so that's all on his record. We'll see if he can do it. If, so, so to me, to you, <clears throat> if he gets Deshaun to play well, not even, what, what, do you, what does Deshaun need to be for you to be like Kevin Stefanski is? Like a uh, top five, he's got to play like a, he's got to play like a star. So That's he got the Browns traded for. So him. he got to play top five. I yeah. wouldn't even. I, I wouldn't even top ten. I would take top ten. Okay, I, I take sure. I, I don't mean, think so. You don't think if Deshaun played the whole seventeen, he wouldn't have been the top. I don't 10 think he would be close. No, he who, wasn't. Who was the Spikey? I'm sorry that I be doing this. Yeah. Who was the? Give me the the tenth quarterback that had like yards wise just yards, yards. That's what all right touchdowns by. touchdowns give me 10 the how about pff grade i don't want to do that because i right. don't they're dead to me all right give, give well give you go by Mike. qbr then qbr all right well, i'll give take QBR. 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 qbr Tua was 10th in qbr yeah Tua was having for until <laughs> the last few weeks an mvp type season yeah, he, he, was, not he was not happy. Tyreek was having an MVP oh, type come on. Here's, here's a top 10 in QBR just so you guys yeah. know where it goes. Uh, Purdy was first, Prescott second, Allen third, Lamar fourth, Herbert fifth, Stafford six, Cousins seven, Mahomes eight, Jordan Love nine, two a 10, and the next five just so you understand the next range. Goff 11, Hurts 12, Minshew 13, Geno 14, CJ Stroud 15. That's some and good where names was, up Where there. was Deshaun with QBR? <laughs> he didn't play a full season for, based on what he played. Yeah. Uh, I get so. <laughs> it doesn't go that low. <laughs> well, no, he didn't play enough games to qualify See? in this list. So let me just find. But he the, still had a QBR. I think it was like 48, wasn't yeah. it? His QBR, they showed a graphic all the time. His QBR was 42.9, which then if you go to the QBR rating, that would have ranked 25th. All right, that sucks. That's terrible. Uh, excuse me, 24th. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, Just well, that kid. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the quarterbacks with a lower QBR than Deshaun Watson. Last season, Sam Howell, Aiden O'Connell, Desmond Ritter, Kenny Pickett, Mac Jones, Bryce Young, and Zach Wilson. He's better than Kenny Pickett. Suck. He's better than Kenny Pickett. Th- those guys all suck. <laughs> None of those guys are starters. Okay, here's the bottom line, Tyvis. I love you, but we got to stop with this. <laughs> We got to stop with this Deshaun Watson played well nonsense. Oh, every every, but, every single person who responded <laughs> to the Deshaun Watson with his 4-1 and one record, those same people were, were saying, not his fault, they went 4-12 and 12 against Houston. Or when he was with his last year in Houston, he played great. So if, if you want credit for 4-1 and one Deshaun Watson, then he played terrible when, when they were 4-12 and 12 and he threw for 5,000 yards. He gets no credit for those, for that good season. None. If you're crediting his 4-1, and one, he gets wait, no credit minute, for that season. Wait a minute. You know better. He sucked. He has sucked since he's been here. He had one decent half. He played fine against Tennessee. With any, you didn't need him to beat Tennessee. Any slap dick quarterback with the Browns would have beat Tennessee, and you damn well know it. So he's got to play like a superstar because the Browns didn't trade him to be a slap dick there with, with Kenny Pickett and Zach Wilson and all these other scrubs. Don't forget Sam Howell. Sam Howell. All these mutts who are going to be backups. They paid him to be a superstar. Wait. They traded a, a million things for him to be a superstar, and he's been nowhere close. And anybody saying he's been close is conning themselves. So it'll be, it better happen this year. That's all I got to say. Tyvis is crying. You crying. Wait, you said you never cried, wait, but you're crying. I <laughs> don't. Wait. Yeah. Can I listen? Yes. Wait, he's really he crying. He's, he's crying really right crying. now. Zoom in. <laughs> he's crying. He's laughing so much he's crying. <laughs> because it's not that serious. Listen. <laughs> What's well, funny? Listen. Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee game. Mm-hmm. He looked good. Okay, he stop, did. It, stop it, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Can we not? He we, did play. And I, is it? Played. Wait a minute. So is it? Is it not that he, he played a good he, game against Tennessee? His shoulder was messed up though. Titus, when he was in Houston. Oh my God! When he was in Houston, did he? 
Did you when you saw him play? You said special. What do you have? That to- guy's special. He has <laughs> never looked that way here. Never. He had moments. He's had. He's everybody made everybody has moments. He's made some throws. Mark Sanchez had moments. <laughs> Listen. Kenny Pickett had moments. The Everybody fact that has a, moments. The fact of the matter is this. The same yeah. reason I'm not going to criticize Deshaun is the same reason I didn't criticize Baker his last year. The man played hurt. The man had a messed up shoulder. He did. He wasn't he hurt. Had, he had he, micro tears in his shoulder. Yes, he did. He was, then he, he ended up messing wait, up the whole thing. He was not hurt in 22. Who? Deshaun. What, the six games? Yes. Stop it. He, that was his I first time playing in two years. Is it my fault he doesn't play? That's his fault. He didn't play in two years. That's not my. That's like me that going. Was his choice. That's like me going out he there. He chose not to play. He did practice. He chose not to play for Houston that last year. That was he, his he, choice. He did. Nobody forced him to sit out. That I, is I, true. I think they shelved him over everything that was going on. No, no, no. They shelved him because he refu- He didn't want to play for them. <laughs> I don't remember. I if don't he remember. That was well, a long time ago, and 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 then he got suspended. He played six games and he wasn't hurt the first few games last year. That was his first time. Yeah. Like, being or having a full off season, knowing to come in and be the starter, and I give you that it yeah. start, but it started off slow and it was progressing, and that's the thing for me. Like it started to progress, and then ever soon as we thought that okay, maybe it's starting to look good, he got hurt with the shoulder. Then we he started to he had the big game against Baltimore in the second half. Boom! Now he's out for the season. So it's like to me, it's still there. I hear, it's there. I just he just got to do it for I, seventeen. And weeks. nobody said. And I'm not saying he's gonna come out in the first five games and just look top five. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think it's gonna take him a, a while. But I think by the end of this upcoming season, he will be playing like a top ten quarterback. I never said that it wasn't still there or that it couldn't be still there. But it has to happen this year. Isn't it does. That fair? I agree with this that. This is it. It's got to happen this year. We can't yes. have any more excuses. I still think he if can he do play, it. If he plays 17 games, I won't say anything. Uh, if he, well, if he plays a full season and he still looks like then, a guy, then, yeah. then that's that. There, there, you know, I agree with that statement. You know, so, and that's why I'm saying Kevin Stefanski has to be part of the team that gets the best out of him. Well, because I, it should be there because we've seen him do it. Well, you, you, I think that they, they're doing that because of the – changes that they made offensively on the staff. If he can get the best out of Jacoby Brissett and Baker Mayfield and Joe Flacco and Phillip Walker and Deshaun doesn't look his best, you put that on Kevin or do you put that on Deshaun? No, now I would argue that Baker's best season was last year. Yeah, he, yeah, right? he did. But, but, Kev, but he, Kevin <laughs> also got the best got, out of Got him. very good play out of Baker at a younger stage in his career. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, to answer your question, if – Desh- uh, if Deshaun Watson has a bad year again and the Browns are a middling team, I would not fire Kevin Stefanski. I wouldn't either. So would uh, you – let me say this. Yeah. If, if – say Deshaun doesn't play to the ability. Yeah. Right? And Kevin benches him. Yes. Would you put that as a – would you say that that's more of a top 10 coach move? Or would you be like, he's got to ride it out with Deshaun and make it work? I think that's highly unlikely that they would bench him. I know. I'm just saying. But if it happens, would you respect him more? I would respect the move. Yes. I think it's more likely to happen this year than last year. Last year, there was a 0% chance he was ever getting benched. This year, it's probably a 1% chance. Now, in 2025. Listen, the the Broncos bench Russell. Yeah. So the move move is, if you make the move, ain't nobody going to really be mad at you. No. If, no, if Deshaun ain't playing well and they said all, they benched him and for who's the backup for Jameis? Jameis yeah, and Jameis is out there lighting it up. Yeah, nobody's going to care if Jameis is lighting it up. But that's only going to happen if Deshaun is really. Yeah, bad. he's got to be really. Yeah, bad. he got to be like no touchdowns, ten picks. Yeah, like, like that type of thing. Really awful. Yeah. Go ahead. So to Mike. put a bow tie in this conversation to tie back to Stefanski real quick, does he just simply have to win playoff games? Yes. Is that all he has to do to put himself in that conversation for people outside of Cleveland. When yeah, you're I mean, evaluating the top head coaches in football. You can't solidify yourself as a top ten coach in the league if you've had no success in the playoffs. He's won a game. One game that, that he wasn't there for. But I give him credit for it. Thank you. 